go ahead and let each of them introduce themselves. But in today's video, we're going to be going through a few of the different ways that they're involved and <clears throat> Q&As for them. So why don't we kick off with Slade as an introduction and then we'll go through everyone else. Hello, everyone. My name is Slade Basel. I am a Louisiana chapter leader. Um, my, I work at Nickel State University, and my title is Director of Telecommunications and Networking. Hi, everybody. My name is Tim Mack, and I'm with the, uh, I'm the president of the Northern California chapter group, and uh, I work for Sacramento Municipal Utility District, and I'm an infrastructure specialist here working on all things Avaya. Hi, my name is Dustin Fales uh, with the South Carolina chapter. I uh, work for ACS Technologies where I'm a uh, network um, telecommunications server administrator. Hi everyone, I'm Susan Cope with the Chicago chapter leadership team and I'm the telecommunications manager at McCormick Place. Thanks everyone for joining and I am Mackenzie Crabtree with the International VI Users Group Headquarters um, Community Coordinator and work with our lovely chapter leaders, uh, members, and conference planning committee. So, all right team, let's get started. First of all, it's great to see you all. Um, you guys are really the core of our group chapters. Um, do so much for the organization, for our members, and for the VI ecosystem. And we know a lot of people have maybe not been to a chapter meeting before or are new to IAUG, and so they want to know, okay, well, what goes into a chapter? What do chapter leaders do? What happens at a meeting? So we just want to have a fun discussion about um, your experiences as being a chapter leader, being a member, and hopefully someone will learn something new or want to get involved. So with that, I'm going to start a question. So, Slade, what led you to want to be a chapter leader? So I've been a chapter leader for a really long time now. Uh, back in 2006, Louisiana chapter was uh, the chapter leadership at the time was looking to retire and get out of the leadership role. And before we allowed the chapter just to dissolve, I decided to step in as uh, the chapter president at that time. Um, I was pretty much doing it by myself from 2006 till probably 2016, 2017. Um, since then, we've uh, increased our chapter leadership team uh, to what we have now. We have three leaders all together. Yeah, it helps to not do it alone. Yes. That's for sure. How did you recruit or encourage others to come alongside you? And what are the biggest differences you can see in the past few years? So um, I always, in every meeting for the 10 or so years that I was doing it by myself, I've always asked, hey, anyone want to help? Anyone want to do this, that, and the other? And you know, everybody said, ah, we're good. But if you need anything, let me know. So I finally started delicate. Hey, would you mind doing this? <laughs> and hey, could you do this? And as soon as you gave them a task, they were all on board. Uh, so our two, our chapter leaders now are pretty much taking it over and they run in the chapter and I'm just an advisory role as a past president now. Um, but yes, once you ask them to specifically do something, they were all in. But until then, if you just ask them, uh, you know, anyone who want to volunteer, they seem to be really hesitant. But if you give them a, an assignment, if you will, <laughs> they tend to get all in. Yeah, I think that's pretty common um you know when you take certain things that have that goes into planning a meeting and break it up into something bite size it's easy for more people to get in, involved and and start spreading the love if you will so your chapter has grown significantly over the past few years and i think every time i meet someone from from the louisiana chapter they're just so nice so pleasant have great things to say so obviously asking for people to help is a good move so what about Tim? I know that you kind of were uh, in the chapter for a while and then in a similar position um, where the current leader went on to be a board member for headquarters and then you found yourself taking over a leadership position. So tell us a little bit about your thoughts 
hesitations and how you've grown over the past couple of years as a leader? Yeah, so um, uh, I started to go to the uh, IUG meetings as soon as I started at SMUD back in 2012 and, and kind of had to get my boss to, to come on board and say, hey, you know, come come check this out. And uh, as the very from the very first meeting that I went to, I, I went, hey, this is something that I really want to be involved with and and uh, and stay connected with. And, and so uh, we started going to to chapter meetings every quarter that we were holding chapter meetings every every quarter here in Northern California. Um, uh, I volunteered uh, with with Chip Powell uh, to be president. One of the other leaders uh, was actually leaving. They went to a, a competitor system and and uh, so he was leaving. And, and so I went, OK, well, I'll, I'll step in and be vice president. And uh, with Chip's, you know, leadership skills and mentorship, uh, uh, he really helped me to to sort of groom me to become the president. Uh, uh, and then when uh, Chip was asked to uh, step into the board uh, member role at the at the national level, then uh, it, it, I, I just went into the president role. And uh, it's actually been been really good since then. Uh, like Slade, we, we've uh, brought on a, a couple new leaders into the team and, and you kind of have to do the same thing. You go in and say, hey, would you do this? And, um, uh, and, and they take the ball and run with it. So uh, we now have uh, four members on, on our board now. And uh, it's been a great experience. So I really uh, enjoy, you know, putting the meetings together and, and having the help of the other members uh, to, do, to do that. And uh, also getting to meet all of the various uh, 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 business partners that we work with. Uh, we work with so many business partners uh, that uh, it's, it's really nice to, to have that connection with all of those folks as well. Cool. Susan, question for you. <laughs> um, how has being a chapter leader impacted your professional um, or personal skill set? Um, on the professional side, the one biggest thing that I noticed was my networking with Avaya has grown so much. For instance, when this um, pandemic started, I was so surprised to get a call from the regional vice president who never would have known my name just to say, hey, do you need anything, something we could do to help you? And I was kind of surprised that he remembered who I was and even knew my phone number. But it was it was comforting to know that Avaya reached out um, because they knew who I was. If I wasn't in this role and didn't meet as many people as I did, I don't know that I would have gotten a phone call from such a big person, if you will. Yes, having that kind of direct feedback loop and uh, more people in your network, I think everyone agrees that that is a huge benefit to the user group. And let's see, Dustin, what about you? I know um, you're Mr. Personality. I feel like every time we're at an event, everyone's <laughs> calling your name and saying, hey. So how has the organization impacted your personal and professional career as well? Kind of like Susan, it's, it's allowed that growth, especially within Avaya. Um, we're working on several projects now where if, if I didn't have those connections, the projects may not go as well. We may not be heard as much because we are a small company uh, compared to everybody else. So we don't have um, the talent that everybody else has, but even as a small company and with this position in IUG, um, you know, I'm able to you know, talk to directors and, and vice presidents and those kind of things. So, even with the pandemic, like Susan said, I had one of the directors is now almost a good friend of mine. Uh, hey, how's everything going? So they're just checking in and, and those connections have really made a big difference um, in, in furthering you know, our mission with, with the system and, and helping our even helping our customers even more. And your company won an award within the past couple of years, right? Yeah, we won the Emerging Technologies Award, so we uh, implemented the Avaya mobile experience. We were one of the first customers on that, um, and then we're also uh, continuing to implement Oceana into our environment. Is that process something you talked about 
with your chapter members or, or mentioned at meetings as well? Yes. Oh, uh, yes. We've uh, we've had the um, director over the AME product on site, and I've talked about it as well, and and done many interviews with um, um, other uh, podcasts and things, just talking about it um, and getting the word out and 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 presenting on it at the engaged conferences as well. Very cool. Very cool. So, of course, you all are geniuses. Um, but is there a certain level of technical expertise that you think is necessary to either participate in a meeting or an event? And walk us through if some meetings are more technical than other, or if some members are more advanced than others. Kind of give us an, an overview of what someone could expect at a meeting. What, what could they learn? Do they need any technical experience? Could they come anywhere along their journey? Um, let's just have an open discussion about about that. Anyone? I don't think that there. I don't think there's a technical expertise level for anybody. Whether you're just starting out in the business, it's good to get to know people so that you can learn more from them. And then if you've been in the business for a while, you, you can never learn enough. You, you know, when I first started working in telecommunications, SIP didn't exist. It was just something you did with a cocktail on Saturday night, but it wasn't a, a technology. Whereas now it is. And I had to learn that along the way and learning it through the vendors and going to conference and sitting in sessions and meetings was how I learned it. Um, and so in all honesty, I think the meetings are good for people of, of any level of expertise or something for everybody. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. You know, even if you're just learning or you've been in it for a while, you know, making those connections, even with other business partners that you may not do business with, but um, they're willing, even them, they're willing, hey, you know, this is what we've done for this customer. And so you're able to learn even from other business partners as well and, and other um, people as well. You know, I've reached out to some of our members before and said, hey, Anybody done this? Would you have any documentation? And heck, they sent me their documentation and saved me half a day from writing documentation. So, uh, so you, using other people's um, knowledge and skill sets um, is is what this group is all about. And Dustin makes an important point: is uh, uh, we welcome all business partners to all of our meetings, uh, members, even non-members, uh, just. Uh, that want to get involved uh, in, in, to Susan's point, there, there are people that, that from all different skill sets and levels that come to our meeting, and even some that, that still have a via blue uh, that, that come to our meetings, and there's always some, hey, there you go, Slade, uh, yeah, that, uh, uh, that uh, come to the meetings and, and get, you know, just lots of information uh, that's available to them and just being able to make the contacts also um, with, with people that are in the industry. It's really good. I think yeah. the contact side, like Tim was saying, is the most invaluable thing. You can pay, <laughs> you know, the, however much it is for IUG membership. Um, but to me, the contacts, you know, Slade, Tim, Susan, I've been, been able to get to know these three for a while now is, is, is invaluable. You can't put a price tag on that. I believe having a mix of expertise, a mix of industries, and a mix of business partners and a via uh, the chapter meetings gives you a whole bunch of perspectives on an, uh, each specific problem. So I'm in education. I do like to hear what's going on in other uh, fields like healthcare and business and all that because it may impact us. So having that whole mix of skill set, having the mix of uh, different type of businesses in there, business partners as well as Avaya, um, that just gives you a whole bunch of different ways that you can look at a specific problem and give you ideas on how to resolve it, maybe in a different manner from what you're used to. One of the things that we always do in our meetings too is, is uh, we always set aside time for tech talk. And so we will go out to the audience and say, is anybody having a problem with a you know, particular uh, or something that they're working on that's interesting, or and uh, we always get different feedback from from again all various levels, different types of systems, and there's always somebody in the room that knows the answer to a particular problem that you might be having. So um, it's really cool. Love to hear that. 